Good morning, guys. This is Karen Taradis with Social U, and today we're going to talk about Canva and graphics and that kind of stuff. I am, um, let's see, we're coming to you from Six Figure Intensity Coaching, and I want to make sure I can monitor comments, so I'm just checking real quick. Here we go. All right. If you have any comments for me, I should be able to see those as we go along. I'm going to wait for just a minute before we get started. I always like to start with the why. I'm all about the why. So um, I will start sharing my screen in just a second. <laughs> um, okay. I, I mean, I hate to make you guys wait. I guess we could go ahead and just go ahead and jump on in because we're going to be recording this anyway. So let's go ahead and get started. Um, let's see. Share screen. Alrighty. Okay, it looks like I am sharing screen. Um, hey, Laura, how are you? Okay, I want to make sure that you guys can see everything. And take it just a second to flip over. Okay, let's make this big. All right. Um, first and foremost, I, I always like to start with, and let me here, let me make it a little bit larger so that you guys can see it. Well, let me take, we'll take me off and just use the screen. Okay. There we go. All right. Um, I always like to start with why. Why do you do anything? Um, why? Okay, always why. Um, and when we get started, I want to talk to you guys about why graphics need to be good, the importance of graphics. But before all of that, you guys know it's critically important for you to uh, be on the platform that's going to get you the most traction. So I'm going to quickly, because I have a ton of information to share with you guys today. So I want to quickly touch base on which platform do you need to be on. Hey guys. Hey, Laura, Amy. Hey, Sabrina, Deborah. It's good to see everybody. Okay. Facebook. Facebook is still the biggest player in the room. It has the most users. It's pretty evenly spaced. Most adults, you know, people with money who are looking to buy homes, most adults are on Facebook. Over a billion users and 74% of high income earners are on Facebook. And it's been my experience, especially in the local market. You just about can't escape Facebook. Um, most people will check your credibility online. And one of the first things they check for is Facebook page. Um, LinkedIn works for you if you are very um, open or working on um, specifically business to business. Okay, what does that mean? It means that if you work, and this is just an example, let's say you work in um, Huntsville and your primary candidates are engineers that are relocating. LinkedIn is the perfect place for you to be because that's where engineers hang out. It's a, it's a very specific demographic. Um, tons of users about, all, right now these numbers have gotten over 700 million. You're looking at 722 million monthly viewers. People who make business decisions are on LinkedIn and engagement has increased over the last year. It's up by 50%. But if you're not specifically focused on a niche industry or if you don't focus on relocation, LinkedIn may not be the best use of your time. And you guys, if you have questions, um, just pop in the comments and let me know. I'm always happy to stop and answer questions. And I will hang out at the end to answer your questions as well. Pinterest, I think, is one of the most overlooked platforms, especially for real estate and realtors. Um, it has a very active user base, uh, really predominantly female. 85% of women use it to plan life moments. Okay, so what's a life moment for a woman uh, or for anybody? Well, getting married, um, going on, um, planning a trip, buying a house, redecorating. Um, that's where they get on and they look for master bedrooms or yard ideas or internal decor, staging tips. A lot of that stuff happens directly on Pinterest. And I think a lot of people discount it. So just kind of bear it in mind. Keep it in the back of your head. Again, Instagram is one of the major players. You guys, seriously, based on what you do, you just about can't escape being on Facebook and Instagram. These are your two um, most fundamental platforms for you to be on. Um, tons of users, over a billion active users. 
half of them are under the age of 34. So if you are focused on new homeowners, Instagram's perfect. And 90% of the people who are on Instagram already um, follow a business account. And not only do they follow a business account, they look for business accounts. And I will tell you this as well. Um, the younger the user, the more validated they feel when a business account responds to their comment. I always thought that was very interesting. Um, yeah, buying a house is a big deal. YouTube video is tremendous. If you guys have not considered integrating YouTube or some kind of video into your marketing plan for this year, you absolutely must. I know you've noticed reels and I'm going to show you a little bit, bit about that today too. Um, reels, Facebook Live, YouTube, TikTok, video is everywhere. You just can't escape it. Now, you don't have to always be in front of the camera. You can um, you can do clips. Uh, most people don't want to see an entire house tour on a short video, but they would love to see a highlight. They would love to see your uh, favorite feature of the kitchen or the cool walk-in pantry or the amazing neighborhood or the cool lake out behind the property. That's the kind of fun stuff that you can put on short videos that really, really works. Um, stats on YouTube, 90% of people say they discover new brands on YouTube. That those, The stats for these are just incredible. It's the second most visited website in the world, and it is the second largest search engine in the world. It's second only to Google. You know who owns YouTube? Google. You know where you can show up on Google? YouTube. So it, it makes a circle. It's If you're going to integrate video, YouTube is something you really, really should consider. But again, you don't have to have full-blown videos. Short videos work great. And I'm happy to answer questions about that as well. But Instagram and Facebook, reels on Instagram work great. TikTok is new. I would tell you don't get too wrapped around the axle on TikTok. Um, I'd much rather see you spend your time on Facebook and Instagram, especially if you are newer to this. But if this is something you've been doing for a while and you have several reels to choose from, TikTok is a good platform because you can cross post with your um, content that you're using for reels. It will actually share very nicely directly to TikTok. And TikTok users are hardcore. They get on there. Um, they spend almost an hour a day and that's on the low side. A lot of TikTok users spend way more than an hour a day, longer than any other platform. Um, they're more likely to share and comment and engage. So if that's something that you would like to see more of, TikTok may be a good platform for you. Um, if you guys are not blogging, highly, highly recommend it. A blog is one of the best places for you to actually toot your own horn. It's the perfect soapbox. You can talk about um, staging tips, or why your neighborhood is the best neighborhood, why you're the best agent, what to look for when you're um, looking for an agent. Just There's a ton of information you could share on a blog. Articles with really good images get, get shown more. And I can tell you this from personal experience. When I am looking for content, if I find a blog and the content is great, if there's no graphics, I'm not using it. I don't care how great the information is. I will not share anything from a blog where the graphics are bad or there's no graphics. Um, and our, um, and for myself, for my own blog, we have to have a minimum of three to five graphics per blog post because I want it to be shareable. And just to kind of give you a quick idea, we can then turn around and I can use those images directly on Instagram and then pin them directly to my Pinterest account. And I very consistently, because I use good images for my blog articles and their information that people are looking for, I my own pins for my own blog, very consistently score in the top seven out of the top 10 on my Pinterest account, they will have at least seven of those slots. And I'm getting thousands of hits just based on click throughs from Pinterest because of my graphics. So it's, it's a big deal. All right. So let's talk about why specifically graphics matter. Why do you need good graphics? And I want to get into the, um, we're going to really talk about Canva and I'm going to walk you through it. But of course, I got to tell you why. Why does it matter? Um, who cares if you have good graphics? 
Well, images are the most important form of content. Um, tweets receive more retweets, 150% more if the images are good. Articles with an image every 75 to 100 words get double the social media shares. I told you guys we share five, uh, three to five images per blog post. That's why. Um, Facebook posts with images are shared almost two and a half times the higher engagement. Um, marketers prioritize visual marketing much better recall. If you want someone to remember your open house, you can write text all day long, but a graphic with the date and the time on it is so much more effective. And when you put those things together, that's a very powerful tool. Um, you also have uh, people share infographics three times more than any other type of content. I'm going to show you how to make an infographic in Canva. And if you're asking yourself, what kind of, what can I share on an infographic? Think about the questions that your um, clients ask you. What do I need to do to get ready to sell? Um, what, what are some of the things I need to look for when I'm buying a new house? You can have a checklist. Um, I will tell you, as someone who has been looking recently myself, I had no idea everything that was involved. And I actually had a person recently tell me, oh, realtors, they just get uh, paid to do nothing. They just they just get paid this percentage and all they do is show a house and sign some paperwork. And I actually had the ability to turn around and say, that is a load of crap. Um, my real estate agent has been pulling her hair out trying to find the right thing for me. She's the one that talks to the appraiser. She's the one that talks to the inspector. She's the one that negotiates. She's the one that found me the great broker that I have. She has has been busting her butt. She earned every penny of the money that she has not even made yet because we haven't closed yet. So that's the kind of thing you can bring to the table in an infographic. People don't understand what they're paying for. Tell them, Send, um, create a list of what you're actually paying for. You're not paying for me to be at the closing. This is all the stuff you're paying for. And because people really don't know what they don't know. So educate those folks. Um, and infographics get shared three times more than any other type of content. People love them. Pinterest in particular love loves um, infographics and they share them a ton. And of course, visual instructions, 300% better than written ones. If I'm going to show you how to do something, I'm going to show you how to do it either through a graphic that I make on Canva or through a how-to video because people remember what they see. Um, thanks, Sabrina. I appreciate that. Marketers really use almost 75% of marketers use visuals in their social media content. You just about can't have a, an entirely text post anymore. People will ignore it. And think about Instagram. Those posts that have cool graphics get hit the hardest. And when you have striking brand recognition or brand color recognition, it can improve um, having that striking branding improves your recognition by 80%. You guys, I'm sure have seen my logos on all of these slides. If you go to my Instagram account, it's almost all purple because that's my brand color. So you're going to see it all over everything. And now we've, we've been doing this for long enough. You can take a glance at my Instagram and it's so cultivated and branded. I mean, it just screams, it screams social you. And that's what you want. Um, consumers need to see a logo nine times before it becomes recognizable. That's crazy to me. And people need information almost the old um, stats where they needed to see it seven times before they would consider making a sale. And those stats have <clears throat> almost doubled now because people are getting bombarded with information constantly. OK, so you know kind of why you need great graphics. It's what brings people in. But what happens when the graphics are good? What does happen when the graphics are good? Well, obviously, first off, it makes a great first impression. Nothing is worse than a bad graphic. Seriously, it's like watching a bad movie or a bad video. It's hard to get past it if it's bad, but if it's good, it makes a great first impression. Um, it makes your company memorable and recognizable to clients. I don't have to tell you guys what that, um, what that logo means. Everybody knows what that logo means. Um, it attracts your ideal customer. People who are looking for what you do will engage with you quicker um, and more often if your brand is recognizable and the content you're sharing is branded. It helps you stand out from the competition. Um, I cannot tell you how many bad graphics I've seen in the lifetime of my uh, of my work. A lot. <laughs> tell you I've seen some of them recently uh, they're just bad graphics are everywhere and the the better more polished your graphics look the more likely you are to stand out and you guys think about it think about the last 
few open houses or listings you saw that were done by the agent, were they good? Uh, did they have, God forbid, watermark on the picture? Yeah, think about that. Graphics tell a better story and consistency is key. So if they're good all the time and people are expecting them to be good, they will, of course, um, tune in to you more. And it makes your content shareable. How many times have you shared something online just because you like the picture or just because it made you laugh or just because it had good information? You, you're the best example of what is shared. If you would share it, that answers your own question. So when your graphics are good, people are more, much more likely to share it. Um, copyright issues are real. I have seen clients sued over images they use on their website because they pulled something off of Google and used it without permission. There is no excuse in this day and age with all these free graphics and images that are available to you for you to ever use anything that is copyrighted. If you are still Googling an image and pulling an image off of Google, stop doing that. I can give you a list of 10 websites that uh, outside of Canva that have killer free images for you to use that will not get you sued. And if, I mean, if the the person who, if they find a picture on your blog, you can be sued for every day that it was up there. If it's on your website, you can be sued for every day it was on the website. Um, they can shut down your account. It's a big deal and nobody wants to get sued. So I will be happy to share those resources with you. There's some really, really good ones. Okay, let's talk about bad graphics for just a minute. And I'm going to um, kind of pick on your industry a little bit. Now, we made these. I didn't pull any offline because that's just rude. Um, but everybody's seen this where the text, there's so much text you can't read anything. Yeah, ridiculous. Or the font is terrible. Um, the only reason for you to ever use Comic Sans is if you're an eight-year-old girl writing a poem about a unicorn. Use professional fonts. And we're going to talk about that too. Um, if, if you think no one's paying attention to your graphics, misspell a word. I promise you they're paying attention. People notice. And this color on this graphic is harsh on the eye. It is very difficult for people to be able to, to see it. It, it. They will avoid it because of the color. Um, seriously, it's terrible. <laughs> that makes me cringe. Okay. Can you even read the text? When you guys very first saw this graphic in the first couple of split seconds, did you even realize there was text next to the word sale? Cause I didn't and I made it. I mean, I know it says the sale starts February the 2nd, but I can't read it. Um, have you ever been, I, I, the, just this week, I was driving in a up 280 and there's a brand new store. It's, um, I think it's a bakery. Can't read the name of the bakery because the font they use for the sign is so bad. You can't tell what it says. Font matters. Examples of good graphics. Obviously, I'm not a realtor, but we used me as an example. Very simple, very clean. And you want the whole purpose of your graphic is for people to want additional information. So you don't have to jam it all into a single image. Memes work. If you can make somebody laugh, they it, it makes you relatable. So if that's something that works for you, you should absolutely use it. One of the... <laughs> One of the most viral memes we ever created was for Jenny and her team. It was a, a realtor in a business suit, a man in a suit, in a float, in a pool that ha was had his computer in his lap. And it says realtors on vacation. And it got shared, oh gosh, I don't know, 900 times a ton. And of course, it had her logo on it because it was branded. So it's totally okay. to use, We pay for to use a meme generator, which makes it legal for me to use this image because I pay a subscription to use it. But if you're going to use humor, use humor. It, it really works. Um, it's a great way to share testimonials and it's clean looking. You don't have to, if somebody writes you a whole paragraph for a testimonial, you don't have to share the whole thing at one time. It's totally okay to share it in pieces uh, and, and highlight what works for you based on what you're promoting at that specific time. We're going to talk about that too. Okay. How to have great graphics. I'm going to come out of the screen and I am going to go to um, actually go to Canva. 
And we're going to start on Canva. And let me um, get just a second for my screen to catch up with me. Now, I am... Um, Hold on. There it is. All right, guys, I, when I switch over, I'm not going to be able to see your questions as readily. I will still monitor, but it might take me a minute to get to your questions. So if you'll bear with me, anything you want to know, it will definitely be I'm happy to answer. Just just give me a, a minute to get there. So let me pull up my. OK. First and foremost, I want to kind of take you on a tour. Now, Canva has a free version. We use the paid version. It is very inexpensive compared to some of the other programs that are out there, um, especially Adobe, which is so hard to use. So we're going to focus on, I, I like free stuff. So I'm going to show you as much free stuff as I can. So that being said, let's just tour. This is your home page. Um, you have different teams that are available. So if these are some of the different teams that we have where clients have accounts on Canva and they share their information with me, which makes me able to see their previous graphics. It also makes me able to see their um, previous uh, information that they've shared. And so that if I make a graphic, they can access it as well, which is really a handy little tool. So let's just start with a tour. You have a ton of information on here. Um, any design, I've ever done is, is housed in the main part of the page and that's fine but if we go across the top if you just hover over templates it will pull up templates that you didn't even know you could make you want to make a t-shirt for that chili cook-off that's coming up so that your team is recognizable here you go t-shirt design if you want to do a presentation with slides it's right here if you want to um, create class schedules or proposals there, it's all right here. So this is a great way, templates, to just kind of see what's available. And you can, um, it's just so much itineraries, bookmark, just very cool. You want to give certificates for the best employee or the employee of the month? There you go. It's right there. But I like, again, I like to kind of start simple. And then if you want to navigate this bar, um, it, I can pull up every design I've ever made, designs I've made in the last week, images that have been shared with me. So if I'm looking for an image that has been shared, um, by another um, team member, I can click on that and it will pull up immediately. So I want to make, we're just going to start with some basic stuff. So I'm going to start with Facebook. So if I just start typing the word Facebook, anything that's available that you can make on Canva will pull up immediately. Um, an ad, a, a Facebook cover, event cover. And if you'll notice, as I hover over the name, it shows you the dimensions. So if you're ever in a position where you have to create a graphic or a graphic or somebody saying, how big do you need that to be? You can quickly go to Canva and type in whatever you're looking for and it will pull up the dimensions immediately. So we're just going to make this really simple. We're going to use Facebook posts. Um, also here, let me show you this real quick while we're here. You want to make a reel? You can just so very cool um, real estate postcard. You see there's there's subcategories with real estate actually built into the title. Very, it's just very cool. Canva can do all kinds of things. Okay, let's go back to Facebook and I'm going to show you guys how to make um, borders and we're going to do a sold and a for sale. I promise you we're going to cover all that. We will get there. So Facebook post. I want to give you a tour first so that you can kind of see what's happening. Um, okay. Once you pull up, excuse me, once you pull up Facebook post, it gives you a defaults. This is the default page. It's just going to pull up some templates you can use, different colors you can use. Um, you have all these choices. It's a bit overwhelming, especially if you're new. So I'm going to click on create a blank Facebook post. Very simple. Now, Canvas still wants to help you. It wants to help you as much as possible. So even if you pick a blank, it's still going to give you template options. And again, I'm going to let's take a tour. So the very first button on the top left bar, it says templates. And these are templates that I've used recently. These are templates that I've used many times. And this is what's popular. Of course, everybody's talking about Corona on Facebook. And look, here is the post uh, for Corona newsroom, all of this information, they, this is the default for them. They're just going to try to share with you what they think you want to see. So this may be way out of line. They, this may not be anything that you guys are interested in um, specifically. So let's get to something that you can 
look at specifically. So in your templates, if you look for a category like fall, it will pull up everything that it thinks has to do with fall. Very different options than the templates had already suggested. And these, some of these are just amazing. Seriously, really good images. And I'm going to show you how to use these. We will come back to this. I want to show you all the different elements first. The next thing down on the left-hand bar, and this is your, this is where you're going to live and breathe. This navigation bar is really how you get it done. Okay, elements come next. Yes, we've been doing swimsuit stuff. <laughs> <laughs> and there's the lady to prove it. So you have all these different choices and elements. You can look for pictures or graphics or backgrounds. And it has categories that we've used recently. Um, those are the default on the top. So if you're constantly looking for a home image or if you're constantly looking for a sign, that is the default. But you also have lines and shapes, graphics, photos, videos. You see all this stuff that comes up when you just hit elements. And it's a very different search bar than templates. So I'm going to type in fall just like I did for templates and I get something totally different. Look at all these cool images for fall. Okay, well, I don't like these cartoony things or maybe that's what I'm looking for. I need some clip art for a sign. If I just click on graphics, it'll pull up only clip art. If I don't like this and I want to go to photos, it will only pull up photos. And the more specific you make the search, the more specific it will be. So if I if I put fall leaves, I'm going to get something very different than if I type in fall, uh, let's try fall festival. Very different. Um, some of, you know, what's available on Canva is just knowing how to search for it. Very interesting stuff. Okay. So now that you see how you can navigate on elements, the next um, option down is uploads. And this is where you upload pictures. I'm going to go ahead and upload a couple of images that we're going to use to make our own graphic. You just click upload media. I have a few that I've saved. Anybody recognize her? We're going to put a couple of her in there. Um, so we have some options. There she is again. And I pulled just a couple of random houses off of her Facebook page. Again, we're going to use these images shortly so I can show you how to make your own open house. And I've already loaded the logo, so we're going to skip that one and just use the house. Okay, you can also drag and drop. Very simple. Uh, if I want to upload a video, um, an MP4, I can, or I can record myself. Um, you just click on here and you can make your own recording, which is so cool because once it's recorded and you add it, you can put text on top of it. And I'm going to show you how to do that as well. Um, if you keep going down to photos, this is another searchable um, way to find different elements. You can see what's trending. You can, again, um, whatever you type in to search, it will pull up different images for you. I don't think that we've seen this one so far and it's new just under photos. So, so many cool things. Now, what are these little dots over here? Okay, well, well, what if I wanted, let's see, what if I only want square pictures? They're square pictures. So I know for a fact, all of these will fit for my Facebook post. Um, I can clear my filter. What else can I filter? Free. I don't want to pay for anything. I like free and it will pull up everything that's free. And if you're wondering if it's free, you just drag your cursor over it and you see in the little corner it says free. It tells you right away. Text is the next option down. You can literally add any kind of text that you want. And when you select your text, you just click on it to add it. And see it's highlighted. I can change the heading. And then I can go up here to my bar and I'm going to show you guys how to do this and change my font. I don't want to, um, I want to finish the navigation first, but it's very easy to do. And anything you do that you don't like, you can either delete it with a little trash can up here in the corner, or you just click on the undo and you can undo it. And it goes just like um, Microsoft Word, it goes back one at a time. All right. If you go down to videos, I think this may be the coolest thing ever. Um, you can add a video for your post and actually put text on the top of it. So if I wanted to do something fun for um, the 4th of July or Memorial Day, you can click to add it. 
here. Let me make it fit. Here, undo. Undo. You're going to drag it and drop it. Okay, we're going to keep going down our navigation bar. Um, charts are available if that's something that you're interested in. Um, you can do your own QR code, which is so cool. Um, if you're at a show or an open house and you want to capture people's information or you want to have a giveaway, you can put the URL for your landing page right here and it will generate the code so that you can make it accessible. Um, you just print it and have it available for people to scan. Very cool feature. I have a logo folder where um, different people that we work with, we have the logos preloaded, so it makes it faster to find. Um, I went ahead and loaded EXP right here so that we can use it for our sample later. And I cheated. I got it off of her website. Very easy, and I can show you guys how to do that too. Um, you can click on the more at the bottom. More has just the coolest stuff. Um, it can take you to different folders. So you can have folders for different, you know, houses aren't staying on the market long enough to have a folder right now. But you can have a folder for a neighborhood. If you work in Trustville and you work in, oh, Greystone, you can have two separate folders for that. It's so many cool things you can add. Um, emojis, you can look. Pexels is a different search for images. And it allows you to look, and I'm going to, sh again, show you that as well. Um, you can pull directly from your Google Drive or from Instagram. Um, it also allows you to make Google Maps, which I think is so incredibly cool. Um, you can put the your address of where you are, and it will generate a map for you to print out because, you know, people need that. Well, not so much now as before, but like my office is on the back side of the building and um, most people go to the front. So I will um, have created a map for our office and then I used in Canva a little arrow, a little content box, um, text box that says pull around to the back. Just makes it so, so easy. Okay, I want to make sure I covered all of these. Um, yes, yes, yes. And of course, emojis. Um, if you guys, <laughs> if you guys are not using emojis in your captions, you're missing the boat. Um, I will go ahead and tell you one of the best resources for emojis is something called Emojipedia, and it's as simple as um, Emojipedia, and you can search. Uh, let's say I want a house emoji. You can search for your emoji that you want. I want a house with a garden. That's the one I like. I can copy it or download it and then upload it directly into my um, my Canva uploads. Also very cool. There's just so many different things that you can do with Canva. Um, the last thing I wanted to show you on the tour. Oh, no, we'll, we'll come back to that. So this, this will help you navigate. Now you know how to kind of navigate the side. Let's make something. I want to show you how to manipulate your template so that it works for you. And before I start to create an image, I want to check and see if anybody has any questions. Does anybody have any questions? Anyone? Bueller? Bueller? Okay. Just making sure. Okay. Since Halloween is coming, we can do, you guys, do you want to, and I am definitely going to show you how to do um, open house and put a border or sold sign, but I want to show you how to do some general stuff first. So let's just take something very simple. If I take this image, if you click on it, because it's the same size, it will auto fill. Now, now that we have an image over here, I want to show you how to navigate the top right here. Okay. What does all this mean? Um, I can take this. Let's start with something really simple. The font. I can highlight this font and the, see the bar up here has changed. I can now select a different font, hundreds of fonts to choose from. Um, it's, I believe that's, it's not Laura, but I can change it to Laura. Oh, I have to highlight it first. Excuse me. Um, Arima. Ooh, that's terrible. Let's pick a different one. Impossible to read. 
Definitely don't want that. Let's go back to the font we had. So I'm, I can back up with my undo button up here on the top. I can also change the color if I wanted to make it dark blue, yikes, <laughs> or gray, which would make it also impossible to read. But I'm going to leave it white so that you can read it. Okay, I can make it bigger. I can um, make it bold. Oh, I like it bold because it makes it easier to read. I can uh, make it italicized, which with this font, that's kind of overkill. And then of course you can align it. I wanted it to be in the middle, but if I have an image where, like, if, if I was going to put a, a picture of Jenny here and I wanted the text to be over here, I can align it on either side, but we're going to leave it in the center. And then these three little dots right here will help you understand more options that you have. Position indicates if you want it to be at the top, the middle, the bottom. Very cool. I want it to be in the center. Um, so I'm going to um, put it back where it was. Let me go back to my dots. Um, I can add spacing. I can put a list. I can ungroup my text, but I'll show you how to do that in just a little bit. Okay, so I have all my text. Let's take a look at it. Okay, I don't like these little, that little flourishy thing right there. So if I highlight it and come up here to the trash can, I can delete that one little thing. Now there's too much space between the flourish and the text, so I'm going to scoot it up a little bit. And I, I do like that flourish. I want to put another one. If you highlight it and you come up here to your um, to your dots, see where the little plus right here where it says duplicate? I'm going to make another one just like it. And now I'm going to grab it and I'm going to move it back down. But this time I'm going to put it all the way at the bottom. And do you see as I move it, see the purple lines? It's telling me that it's centered. That box is telling me it's exactly in the middle. Okay, what about the picture behind it? See this, um, it's kind of dark. So let's, let's edit the image. Well, for starters, I think it's filtered. What if I don't want a filter? What if I want no filter? Okay. That's what the picture really looks like. So if I have no filter, it makes it kind of hard to see. So I'm going to put, let's see. I'm going to, ooh, check some different filters. Oh, that's not good. <laughs> we're going we're gonna to leave it on this one just for the sake of um, the demonstration. Okay, here's here, this one. This is, and you can, anytime, of course, you can undo anything. So these are different examples of filters. But let's say... I don't want that tree right there. I can flip it and put the tree on the other side. And I can do this with images I upload myself, which I'm going to show you also. I can, um, let's see, what else can I do? Well, as far as this image is concerned, that's about it. Now, what if I don't like that image? I don't, I've decided I don't like it. I'm gonna take off the filter. Yeah, I don't like that. So I'm gonna go over here to Elements. I'm going to select photos and I'm going to just select uh, fall leaves. Okay, I like these leaves. So I'm going to take them and drag them over here. And they it will automatically see what I did. I changed my background picture. Very, very simple to do. And do I want to keep, um, is that, does that make it hard to read? Maybe a little bit. So I'm going to, again, I'm going to highlight my image. I'm going to come up here to the this button that says transparency, and I'm going to make it a little less transparent. I'm going to drag it so that it's a little less transparent so that my text stands out. Much better. Now, if I want to download this and add movement to this image, I can click on animate. And it shows you all the different examples of how to animate pretty much a still image. I like fade. It's a very subtle change that allows you to bring movement into your image. Now you don't have to do animations, but I definitely want you to see how they work. And if you are doing animations, you can control how often or how long it takes. If I wanted it to take six seconds instead of five seconds, 
let's let me show you um, 10 so that you can really see the difference. And I'm going to click on fade again. It, it just takes it longer to fill. It's slower, which is totally okay. Now, I like this picture and I want to use it for a series. I'm going to click this plus over here. And it's going to duplicate it for me. Oh, excuse me. Let me uh, let me come out of animate first. Let's go back to our regular image. Okay, here we go. I like this. I do want to use it for a series. I'm going to click on the plus right here. And for some weird reason, it's not duplicating my image. Isn't that awesome how stuff like that only happens when you're live? <laughs> Thanks, guys. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so, so much, Canva. Yeah, but you can, if you click right here, it duplicates your image. And I'm going to show you guys how to do that. Let's go back to edit. Okay, if I wanted to add a second page for my series and I wanted to use different leaves, I'm just going to drag these and drop these here. And just to show you again how that works, if you click the plus, it will add another page. If I want to duplicate this specific image, I'm going to click on the duplicate so that I can get it up there twice. Now, why would I ever want to do that? If I'm making slides for a presentation, um, it's easier to change text if you can just duplicate the slide instead of having to um, redo, redo, redo. Okay, I don't need all these, so I'm going to get rid of this one page. You just click on the little delete and it takes it right off of there. Click on the delete, it takes it right off of there. Now, I can copy this whole text compare to my dots, duplicate. Okay, see there's two of them. I'm going to take them and drag them down here to this other picture. It's that simple. Which looks terrible because you can't see it. So we're going to make it also make it a little more transparent. Okay. All right. So now you know how to do filters. You know how to do um, transparency and flip your flip your text and flip your image. I want to show you, let's see, how to add a link. So if this was um, an open house, and I'm we're gonna I'm actually gonna show you how to do an open house, but if I wanted to embed a link into, let's say, let's say this is a URL instead of the name of the person. You can very simply go up here to more and this little link and it allows you to add your URL to your image so that it's embedded in the graphic, which is so cool. All right. Okay, let's work on an actual open house. And I want to show you guys how to move elements too. Let me show you the elements first. I'm going to pause for a second. Are there any questions? You guys still with me? Any questions? Anyone? Okay, let's work on um, elements. Now that you've seen some of the basics. All right, let's get rid of this. Let's get rid of this whole thing. Okay, going back to templates. Uh, do we want to do fall? There were some good ones for fall. Um, I need one that's got elements on it. Give me just a second to find one. Okay, this will work. Okay, this has multiple elements. You have a picture here and you have a text box. You have so many options. I can come over here to this text box. I can come up to the top and change the color. Where's my, here we go. Click on the box, so the box is highlighted. This is the color that it is now. One of the cool things that Canva does is it shows you the color family of the image. So if I go to photo colors, I like the, the blue much better than that bright orange. That was terrible. I even like the burnt orange or the beige better than that horrible bright orange. But it gives you the whole color palette to work with so that, oh, black is not good. Okay, I like that. So I can change the image excuse me, the color, I can make it bigger, I can make it smaller, I can take off um, text if I want to, and let me, let me make this just a little smidge bigger so you guys can see it, it's 50%, yeah, there we go. 
I'm, I'm blind. I assume that um, I can't see anything. I forget that there are other people who can't, might not be able to see. So I took off the bottom. I don't love these dots on the bottom. I'm going to get rid of them. Just want to delete that one element. Limited time offer. Okay. I want to take this and move it down, but just the words. Okay. How do I do that? You um, highlight these words. You come up here to where it says ungroup. Now they're separate. So I can take the words and move them and it won't move the whole chunk of text and I can still line them up. Um, okay. I, I kind of think I, I like that better. Um, I can take this picture and flip it. Nope. No, that covers up. Okay. I do like it better on that side. So now I'm going to move the whole thing. I'm going to highlight this whole thing. I'm going to go back up to my options. Hold on, the whole thing. Okay. The whole thing. <laughs> Again, this never happens when you're unless you're live. I'm gonna lock it. What does it mean? It means now they should move as a whole unit instead of okay, it's not gonna do that. Come on, Canva. Okay, it's locked. This is okay, that's what I locked. You see the little lock at the top? It unlocks and locks so that it locks it into position. So I can take this whole thing. Wow. The whole thing. Okay. Yeah. Does it work all the time? Yes, it does. Is it not working for me right now? No. Oh, I'm getting frustrated. Okay. I want to move this. Um, for, let me unlock it. All right. I'm going to move this whole thing over. Um, I don't want this whole thing to show, so I'm going to let part of it hang outside. Now I'm going to move my texts. And you don't have to do it one at a time. Normally it lets you lock it with no problem. It just didn't want to do that for me today. And I want you guys to see there's a different way to do everything. Much better. Now I can readjust this picture if I want to, or I can go find a different picture. Um, I can go down here to the photo option and I can click on, um, uh, let's say I want pecan pie instead of whatever that is, pumpkin. And I'm going to drag this pie into the picture. Do I like that picture? Yeah, it'll, it'll work. It's not very good. Is there better pie? Oh, that's a good picture. Oh, I like the apple pie. But you see how easy it is to swap out the images. Very simple. But we're going to go back to the pumpkin. And when you swap out the images, it also swaps out your, um, your color palette. It follows whatever you add to it. Okay, so we go back to templates because I want to show you how to change some other elements too. Let's add a page. All right. Let's get one that's, oh, that's a good one. Okay. All of the elements in this image are independent. So I can change the text. Oh, they're not independent. They're single unit. I want one where they're independent. Hold on one second. Okay, here. Here we go. All of the elements on this are independent. I can take off these dots. I can move these dots over here. I changed my mind. I want to put the dots over here. Um, I changed my mind. I want to add some more dots. I don't want to duplic accidentally duplicate my page instead of my element. Going to move those. I don't like the color. I can come up here and change those to um, this. Here's my color palette. I can change them to dark. I can change them back to the beige and they're filtered because you see it affects the color. I can make them gray. I can make this color behind this image a different color. I can make it the darker image. I can change the text in this. Um, I can put this whole thing on top of 
Okay, you see that I dragged it over. Well, it's gone. It's not gone. If you go up here to the top and you hit on the buttons, it'll ask you for position and you can pull it forward or backward. There it is. Okay, I didn't want that to be in the, in the forward part. So I'm going to hit my undo button one time. And there it is. So now I have this little bar down here. Well, I think it's, it needs to be a little bit transparent. So that when I put text on it, people can still see the image behind it. But you have the ability to add or delete anything you want to. So if I wanted to add, um, let's say I go to elements and I wanted to add some um, graphics of leaves. Let's put a leaf. I can make them smaller and drag them down here to this corner. I can um, duplicate these leaves. Like I don't like um, that they're facing the same direction. I want them to, to turn a little. Let's get that one out of the way. We're gonna put this one back down here. I can duplicate them again and put them over here in this corner. But you guys see the possibilities are endless. Now, I have totally killed this graphic because I've added all this junk to it. Simple is always, just about always better. So, but I wanted to make sure that you can see the different options that you have within um, the graphic creation. So let me do one more template and then we're gonna do a, um, an open house. Let's see, let's swap it out for Halloween. Okay, this is a great one. Good example. It's a video, the ghost moves up and down, which is super cool. And you see this background, it's kind of textured, it's not solid. Okay, well that's cool, how do I do that? So you highlight the whole thing. I wanna highlight the whole thing. I've made my screen so big I can't highlight the whole thing. Have I mentioned that it only gets messed up when you do it? <laughs> Thank you guys for your patience. Okay, I'm gonna come over here to the side. Let's see, elements. I'm gonna look up backgrounds. Well, let me delete this first. Now, I have all of these different options for backgrounds. And some of them are terrible. Let's, let me see if I can pull up Halloween backgrounds. Again, the more specific you get, yep, sure can. So if I wanted to change this to, oh gosh, this one instead, you just drag it. Again, it's going to make it just as hard. There we go. Okay, little ghosty, you got to go for a minute because you're in the way. Okay, I'll add him back in a minute. So if I wanted to change the background, I can literally just drag it and over here and it will autofill. Except it doesn't want to do that for me. Or I can drag it and make it autofill. Yeah, I like the other one better. So we're going to undo it and put it back. Or I can take something like spider webs. The spider web is cool. It's just not going to autofill. Okay, that's fine. I'm going to go back to templates. I'm going to pick a different one. This one. Go back to elements. Okay, now I'm going to drag and drop. See? And you can change the background so that it's actually anything you want to. Now, if you're dragging and dropping an image, I may not want this circle part to be on the right. If you double click it, it shows you the whole image and I can drag the whole thing around. I don't like that circle part. I just want the web. So once you get what you want it to look like, you click on done and it changes your center of focus. Um, of course, you can't read this. Let's change it to pumpkins. Very simple, but you guys, I, I know you, you kind of see where this is going. It's just a very simple drag and drop. Now, this one is animated. The clouds are actually moving in the background, which to me makes it so much more engaging than just a plain old 
plain old image. Okay, I'm going to check my comments again. Are there any other comments? Do you guys have any questions? All right, let's keep going. All right, now we're going to make a graphic for, um, let's say, an open house. Let me show you how to do that. Okay, let, let me get rid of my Halloween stuff real quick. Let's delete. Delete. All right. So the first thing I'm going to do is I've uploaded my images, which I have done that already. I'm going to show you in uploads. Uploads. Okay. Which picture of Jenny do I want to use? I think I want to use this one. So I'm going to make it just a little bit bigger, except I don't want all the stuff that's around her. I just want her. So I'm going to highlight this. I'm going to come up here to where it says um, edit image. And I'm going to click on background remover. Give it just a second. There you go. Now it's just Jenny. So now that I have this, I'm going to download it. I'm going to leave the background transparent. Download it. It takes it just a second. I know it's downloaded. Now I'm going to take her and add her back to my uploads. Oh, I've got text behind her. You can see where I didn't delete properly the last time. Okay, that's fine. We're going to delete the whole thing. So you guys can, I want to make sure that you can see what I'm doing. Or we can pick a different image of Jenny. Let's go back to our uploads. Um, and we can use this one. All right, except I want to put it on a different page. Now, is she the only thing on this page? Okay. Going to go back to edit image. Going to background remove one more time because I just want her. Okay, that's great. Want to download this as a transparent background. Download. And it's showing, hold on one second. Delete. All right, I want a clean one. It looks like my Halloween background was still lurking. And that happens if it's transparent. Sometimes you can't tell. So let's put her back over here. We're going to do it one more time. Make her just a little bit bigger. Edit image. Background remover. So that it's just her. Okay. It's perfect. Back to the top. Up here, that arrow, you click on your arrow. You select the format you want it to download. I want a transparent background because I'm going to use her on something else. Okay, now I'm going to go to my uploads and I'm going to drag that picture that we just took the background out of and put it in the uploads. There she is. Okay, now let's make a, let's make a graphic. Let's get rid of, let's see, her picture. I'm going to look for a template for an open house. Let's see, what do we want to use? Want something good where we can see the house. Okay, this is this is great. We'll use this one. It's very, very simple. Okay, I don't love that white thing on the bottom, but we're going to leave it for a minute. And I definitely don't love this on the top. So let's say we want to get rid of that group and that you just click on it. There you go. Now I want to put her picture in here. I'm going to go back to uploads. I'm going to take her, the house that we got from her website, her, excuse me, her Facebook page, and I'm just going to drag it and drop it. Okay, that looks actually pretty good with this image. I also want to put her, let's say we want to put her on here. Oh, that's the one that's got my hocus pocus on it. Let's undo it. I can put her down here in the corner. Or I can put her right here so that she's gesturing to the open house. I think I like that. So I'm going to take this whole thing and I'm going to flip it 
to the um, to the other side. We're going to adjust it to the left. Text two. We're going to position it so that it's on the left. Oh, excuse me, right, right. Okay. Now, because there's a little bit of white behind her, you can see that. But I think there needs to be more white. So I'm going to highlight, and drag that just a little bit, or maybe even make it not necessarily smaller. Okay. And I also want to position that to the right. So a lot of this is just playing around and seeing what works. Okay. Don't like that. I want to put it back. Okay. And now I want to take this green one and we're just going to drag it over. Okay. So I can put her on there. I could put open house on there. Uh, let's say I want to put a banner and put um, some information on the banner. Like what time I have choices. I can go to my elements and I can type, literally type in the word banner. And it will give me some options. I just want something really simple that I can write on. Um, let's, let's try this one. I can turn it and put it in the corner. I do want to do that. First, I want to add text. So I'm going to go to text and I am going to put, um, oh, that's very big. We're going to say from 2 p.m. to 4 p.m. And that's huge. So I'm going to make it smaller. I'm going to put it directly on my image, drag it up here. Okay, black does not look good. So now I'm going to go up here and look at my color palette. Green looks good. This dark brown, eh, it doesn't look very good. Let's go back to dark green. That dark green looks good. So I want this whole thing to be one, one piece. So I'm going to come up here to the top and I'm going to, um, let's see if I can't lock these together. Okay. Nope, my lock is absolutely positively not going to work for me today. Oh, and it happens sometimes. So I'm going to have to move them individually. That's okay. Okay, I'm going to come up here in the corner. Now I can leave it like this. I can turn it if I want to turn it. That doesn't look good. I hate it. So I'm going to put it right back down here in this corner and I'm going to make it straight again. But you guys, again, this is to show you the differences from one to the other. Let's get rid of that. That's down there. We're going to get rid of this. That's down there. And I'm just going to put the time down here in the bottom. But we're going to straighten it out. Okay, I know that it's straight. I've decided I don't like my banner. I'm going to click on it, delete it. Now, this picture is not quite as big as this frame. So how do we adjust that? Well, I can double click on it and see if I can drag it. No, I can't make it. I can't drag it down anymore. So what am I going to do with the space down here? Well, I'm going to cover it up. Or I can double click the image. and drag it and force it to fill the space. Okay. Very simple. Now, something else that you can do, let me let me stop and see if you guys have any questions. Any questions? You guys are being awfully quiet. Let's see. I'm just checking. I'm sorry for the delay. I just want to make sure that you guys are taken care of and I don't want to miss any of the, the questions that you might have. So let me let me make sure I'm on the same page as you. Okie doke. All right. Um, Deborah says, is Canva available in different languages? That's a great question. You know, I don't know the answer to that, but I could find out for you and I can post it in the comments on this once we're done. Um, 
but good question. Um, let's see. This is awesome. It's a lot like PowerPoint. It's similar, but it's so, you have so many more options than you do on a PowerPoint. Okay, let's make a let's make a frame for her picture. So I'm going to take let's let's delete this so we can kind of start from scratch. And I'm, I did it the hard way. I deleted everything <laughs> individually. Why did I do that? I don't know. I'm, I'm crazy. Okay, let's make a frame. So we're going to go directly to the photos, the uploads, where we uploaded her image. And we're going to use this house. I'm going to drag it and drop it. Okay. Oh, see, that's a good example. That's what happens when you don't delete it all at one time. You leave elements. Okay, so there are several things that you can do with this. With this, uh, Let me show you. All right. I want to put a frame around it, a branded frame around it. So I'm going to go to elements. I'm going to look for frame. Okay, and I just want the edge. Let's see. So I'm going to scroll through here. I don't really like, oh, I kind of like that. Oh, Jane answered your question. Yes, Canvas web platform is available in 100 languages. That makes total sense that it would be because there's so many different people who use it. I don't love any of these frames, really. Um, okay. All right. That is too formal. I want something really, really simple. Okay, so I can take this frame and make it big. So that you can see it on all the edges. I really don't like the way that looks at all. Let's get rid of that. And I want it to match my logo. So let's do that real quick. Um, I'm going to show you a very cool um, color matching website. It's called, um, the URL is incredibly long. It's uh, color hyphen codes hyphen info backslash colors from image. I will put it in the comments because it's crazy for you guys to try to, um, to write all that down. So I can upload anything I want to. I'm going to upload the logo. And if you hover over it and click, it gives you the color match. So I can highlight this color match and then back to my Canva so that if I'm going to add, let's say something really simple like text, you can highlight it and come up here to color. Then you hit plus and you paste that color number right here. And now you know it matches your logo. You know it matches. And so you guys can see it. I'm going to drag it down here just a little bit. And I want to add the logo. Very simple. We've already, I've already put it in upload so you guys can see it. Where's my logo folder? You click on it. That's it. Now, that logo is huge and it's in the middle of the page. That's not going to work. So I'm going to make it smaller. You can make it as small as you want to. And you can put it anywhere. We're going to put it up here in this corner. So now it's easy to see. It's got a great transparent background on it. It's branded. Okay, I can come down here and put open house. And um, continue to type Sunday. 2 p.m. to 4 p.m. Okay, that's way too big. So I want this to be much smaller. I'm going to make that text smaller. So it fits on the same line, and I want it to be perfect. There we go. Now, can you see that? Eh, kind of, and I think I want it to be even smaller. How can I make it show up better? Well, I can put a frame around this entire thing. Or I could simply put um, a banner across the bottom. So let's go back to our elements. I'm going to go back to banner. Let's do just a really simple banner. 
We're going to make it bigger. That's too big. Too big, but yeah, for the for the, the kid, just to show you guys how this works. Now, that is a whole lot of banner. And it, that big bright, that's too much. So if I click on it and I come up here to the corner on transparency, I can make it less transparent so that you can still see the image behind it, but you can read the text a little bit better. Or I could um, take this, let's get rid of the banner. We're going to delete it. I can take this whole thing. And um, if you wanted to turn it sideways, you could. You could put it in the upper corner. But you have a bunch of different options. Okay. Let's see. I had some other stuff, very specific stuff to show you guys. House and logo. Okay. You know how to do text. Um, let's see, grid. I also wanted to show you guys how to do email signatures and bio links. I'm going to show you how to do that in just a second. Okay, before I move forward, are there any, do you have any questions about anything we've covered so far? Or let's say this, let's say I want to add a page. Let me go back to my uploads. Um, we're going to put this right here. Going to go back to elements and I'm going to find a sold sign. Very simple. I don't like the way that looks. I'm going to get rid of it. And we're going to put a, a much less obnoxious sold sign. Where's a good one? Still not great, but you can see it better if you change the color. Very simple. Now, can you take a picture of yourself holding a sold sign? Absolutely. And then we can use that image on here? Absolutely. So let's get rid of this one. We're going to go back to our pictures of Jenny on our uploads. <laughs> she says, hey, I'm for sale, which is awesome. Let's, let's use her picture here. Okay. Edit image. Remove background. See, it took the sign with her. So I'm going to go to the top, or I can just drag her. But see, if you drag her, it takes the whole thing. So I definitely have to upload her. Remove the background. Now, when you're working on multiple pages and you go to download, it's going to want to download the whole thing. Do you? And you don't want that. So when you click on download and you pick the transparent background, I don't want all three pages. I'm going to select the one I want. That's the one I want. Click on done. Click on download. And it's, it always tells you, hey, you saved, guess what? You saved your design. I'm going to go ahead and load her back into my uploads. There she is. Now, click. It's that simple. And I could put her in the bottom corner. I might flip this house and leave her right here. See how simple? Now, if I wanted to add, um, once it's sold, if there's a picture of her with a for sale sign, that works too. Uh, but you guys can personalize these. There's just so many different options that you have. All right, I want to show you how to do a couple of other things that are unique to Canva um, that they've pretty much recently added. Uh, let's do, you go back to your home screen. Oh, and for you guys who don't want to pay to remove the background because that is a paid feature on Canva, if you want to use the free, you can, um, there's a website, it's called remove.bg. 
And I can take the same images. Let's see, where is she? And it'll do it for free. Same exact thing. That way, if you want to use the free version of Canva, you don't want to pay, you have this as an option, and then you just download it. Same exact thing. And then you can go back and load that directly into your Canva so that you don't have to pay for the paid version of Canva. It's a very cool feature. So we've done, all of this we've done has been in Facebook. We want to now try something a little different. I want to go back to my home screen. And up here across the top, I'm going to look for um, bio link. What's a bio link? Well, if you guys are on Instagram, you know that there's only one URL that you can use. So you have to make it work for you. And a lot of folks use Linktree. Um, I would love to see you, instead of using something like Linktree, use a landing page on your own website. But that can get a little complicated, especially if you don't feel super website savvy. So to avoid that, we can design one, and we're gonna we're gonna design one that's um, for Jenny. You just go through your templates. That's kind of unusual. Do I want to? Well, let's try this one. And let me make her a little bit bigger, so you can see her a little bit better. Let's get rid of this down here. Okay. Obviously, we want to customize this. So let me go to my uploads. We're going to put Jenny behind here. Okay, and now I can change anything I want to. I can say, um, let's see. I can drag the whole thing down. I can... We can leave it like that. I want it to be a little less transparent. So I'm going to come up here to transparency, make it just a little darker so you can read it just a little bit better. I might change the wording here for her. Uh, not Excuse me, not the wording, the color. So that it's if it's not white, you can see it a little better. Obviously, gray is not going to work. That works much better. And then I can take, let's say, um, we're going to change this to contact me. So we can go to her website. I can highlight this and come up here to um, link and embed her website, her, her contact page website. And then when this thing is done, we can use it in place of our link tree so that it's super customized and you can have all the different options. She may have a contact me. She may have more information about six figure intensity. She can have one that says, find me on Facebook. Whatever you want it to say, you can do that through the bio link. Now, if you, of course, if you don't like it, you can always change the template, but this makes it super, um, super easy. Um, something else that you can do is an email signature. So if I wanted to make a customized email signature. Oh, that's a fun one. And I'm, I'm delighted um, that Jenny's such a good guinea pig. <laughs> I mean, volunteer. Thank you, Jenny, for being such a great volunteer. So I'm going to center this. I clicked on it. Okay. So instead of um, instead of saying grand reopening, because it's this an email signature, I'm going to say. And then, of course, you can put any information down here you want and download this. Again, I can have um, her website, her if she's promoting six figure intensity, I can change that and embed the URL. And when we put this on as our email signature, all that information is clickable, but it's a single graphic. I don't know if you guys have ever seen it where people use multiple graphics. That is so frustrating because when you email somebody more than once, it it's, that's a lot of graphics to keep up with. And of course you can do YouTube intros and end screens. Let me show you that real quick for your, for my YouTube folks. You just type YouTube up here. Thumbnail. Let me get rid of some of these screens. Okay, YouTube thumbnail. And for those of you guys who are on YouTube, the thumbnails that work best, and this is just um, st statistics, straight numbers. Um, 
here. Bright colors, image on the left, title on the right, in your brand colors. So if we, we want to change him out for Jenny, so I'm going to go back to my uploads. And I like exaggerated images. So we're going to get rid of his picture right here. And we're going to put her. Going to get rid of him. You change your title right here. And if you are on YouTube, your title needs to be catchy. Super catchy. Like, um, let's say, we'll do something really simple. And short. That's it. Very simple. Now, if I wanted to put a splash behind her, I could move this over here. Make it bigger. Position backward. There you go. Done. Very, very simple. And if you go look at my YouTube channel, um, all my faces are super exaggerated. Normally what we do when I'm talking, I make faces anyway. So when we watch the video, we'll pull out a still from the video of whatever crazy face I'm making and use that as the thumbnail because those do really well. Again, image on the left, um, content on the text on the right. You want to use your face as much as possible so you can brand yourself. And you want to use catchy, short, less than six. Six words is your max for your title. And you want to use exaggerated faces. And that's just statistically what does better. Okay, so we've covered bio link and email signature and YouTube. I told you guys I would also show you how to do um, infographics and I, I want to do that too. Something else I have not shown you yet. Let me, let me do that real quick. If I go to elements and I type in the letter G, I have all of these different G's I can use. For text. So if I wanted to use fancy text, I totally could. I want to use a, a G that I can fill in. I want to be able to change the, the background. So I'm going to go again to elements. Or even, okay. I can do, if I type in backgrounds on elements, I'm going to get all the backgrounds. If I get specific and type in gradients, oops, it helps tremendously if you spell it correctly. Gradient. Very different choices than if I just went to actual backgrounds or actual um, elements, or excuse me, photos, and typed in gradient. And I really, really want to go to, let's see, lines and shapes. And I want a letter. I want the letter G. That I can fill in. Okay, maybe it's not going to do G. I know I can do T. Okay, again, love this. When I'm live, I can't find it. But there, you can do text where you can fill in the letters with whatever you want. And I promise you guys, I will find it and show you how to do it. Wow. Okay. But I did want to show you one other quick thing. Infographics and how simple that is to make. Infographic. And we just want to pick a very simple template. Okay. This is perfect. It's tiny. Let's make it bigger. Uh, at least 50%. So you can see it. Okay, so we've already uploaded her logo and we have her colors. So, hold on, uploads. Let's say we wanted to make this, oh, um, staging tips. Okay, and let's go, let's color match for her one more time. Again, you pull it up right here, you upload your file here because I want to match the orange too. So there's her blue. 
Okay. Change the color right here. Click on the plus sign. That's her blue. Well, orange is terrible for background color. So we're going to make this background color just plain old white. We're going to make this background color her blue that we just added. You see how simple this is and it changes the look immediately. So we're going to go, I would go through here and do um, basically do all of these. So let's say a staging tip is um, putting up your pets, getting rid of your, not getting rid of, but putting your pets away. So I'm going to use a dog and I want to use a graphic. So let's say if I'm talking about pets, um, this might not be, we'd get rid of this graphic and I might add a paw print. Oh, can you, I want to add a paw print. Oh, I'm adding them in the wrong place, excuse me. I got excited. Okay, I would drag, excuse me, get my, let me get my paw print. I'm gonna drag it right up here to where the other icon was. I'm gonna make it a little smaller, it's kind of big. <coughs> excuse me, and now I'm gonna make it orange. So I'm gonna go back to my graphic color and click on it, and I'm gonna match that color back to my infographic. Where is it? And we're gonna add that orange. There you go. Um, and there's no, I don't want to say get rid of your pets. Um, uh, what's the best term? You can't put them away. What board? <laughs> and then you can come down here and write tips, um, how, however you want to do it. Or let's say you want to do declutter. You want to take out personal family photos. Same thing. The whole world understands what a, um, a photo is or a picture. If I wanted to express right here that it was a photo, let's see, what's a good one? I want just graphics. And these of course look like family family pictures, we would make that text. Okay, we want to make the text right here white because you can't see it. Okay. Remove family photos. Okay, very you can create your own infographic. It doesn't have to be complicated. It could be um, top. Come on. Top five staging tips. Doesn't have to be complicated. It doesn't have to be hard. And you don't have to give a ton of information, but these kind of infographics, they look pretty and people love to share them. So anytime you can create content like this, it makes great anchor content, especially if you have a, um, a blog to go with it. Okay, let me come back to uh, my own screen. Let me, um, I don't want to, <laughs> I don't want to completely get rid of my screen, but I will for just a second. Hey guys, so um, let's see if we have any other questions. If there's anything else that you guys want to know. Safe showing for pets. Smart. Yes, I, I should have seen that. Um, you can absolutely drag the image directly into your Canva. It makes it so easy to edit. Are there any other comments for me? Are there any questions? I realize this is a lot of information to take in and we are of course recording this so you can go back and pull out very specific pieces. Um, I hope this information was helpful for you guys. I am happy to answer any questions you have and I'm happy to turn my screen back on so I can show you um, how to do whatever it is you wanna do. But Canva has so many options. It's, it's, it's just tremendous. 
we use it for, um, we used it to generate a branded video for my introduction for um, YouTube. So cool. And we use it for all of our end screens. Um, and when I say end screens, uh, at the end of the YouTube video where it suggests other videos to you in that branded way, that's, we did all those on Canva. It's just a very easy way to do it. Uh, I do like the paid version. It is not expensive. I think it's $12 a month, which is super, super easy. Oh, and I want to make sure and share my contact information with you guys too. So let me do that. I'm so glad this was helpful. Um, super helpful. I use Canva all the time. I love Canva. And we we post tricks. They have literally just made that whole remove background thing available for the paid version. You can always do Canva for free. I love paid just because it's got a lot more features. Um, let me go back to share my screen. Um, yes, my whole screen. So I can give you guys... There we go. I want to make sure that you have um, what you need as far as contact information. Okay. We talked about how to have great graphics. You're going to make those yourself. Um, I do have a link for Canva if that's something you're interested in. Um, we do have an affiliate link. I will post that in the comments for you. I am happy to answer your questions. Um, we do have graphic packs available. If that's something that interests you, you can just take a picture of this QR code. We do um, monthly custom graphics. Um, you can get it. It's $9.99 a month. And we use unique graphics that people can't find anywhere else. So when we use them, we don't normally use Canva because we want it to be unique to you. But we use uh, like for holiday graphics or specialty graphics. If that's something that you're interested in, let us know. Um, these are just examples of open houses uh, listings that we did. I gave the same assignment to each one of my team members, and this is what they came up with. Very different, but you can tell branded and, and all so super attractive. They're just different. You have to, um, it just depends on how you want it to look and how much information. For this particular graphic, she wanted very much to include um, not only the time, uh, and the location, but that there was going to be a $25 gift card. And you can see here on each of these where they chose to do it in different ways, which again, it, the graphics are as unique as the person is doing it. This is information on our realtor custom packs. Um, if that's, if you guys are overwhelmed and you don't want to do this yourself, we have a, a custom pack that we make that includes 10 graphics with stuff like sold or for sale. We'll make you your own frame so that you would literally get this, um, this download right here so that anytime you have a house that's sold, all you have to do is put your house in the middle of it. Very, very simple. And of course I want you guys, thank you so much for spending time with me today. And I want very much for you to be able to contact me if there's anything you need. So there is my contact information. Um, I'm always happy to help. I'm always available if you have questions. And I've, as soon as I've said that, I've, I've let my screen go dark <laughs> to be able to see the questions. So let me pull those up real quick. Um, if there's anything else that you guys need, please, please let me know. And let me stop sharing my screen so I can answer anything you might want to answer. Okay. Um, thank you, guys. I am so, so glad you enjoyed this. Oh, color codes. Um, you can do a color match. Color match is very simple. Um, this is the URL. I'll go ahead and put it in the comments, you guys, just as soon as we get done. But it's it's literally called um, Get Colors. It's totally free. You can upload any image you want to here, and it will color match. And once you've once you've uploaded a graphic directly into um, directly into Canva, it pulls the palette for you, but it's um, literally called colors from images. I promise you, I will post that link totally free. Then you just drag and drop or upload your picture. And when you drag your cursor over it, you pick the, which color you want to match and it will automatically pull it out. Then you just simply copy and paste it into your, um, into your color wheel on Canva. 
Um, quick question on the blogs. Is it best to post blogs from our website or on social media? Um, your blog is the best way for you to get SEO. And for those folks who may not know, SEO is search engine optimization. It's basically the way Google finds you. Um, we really saw magic in this last year because we, we hit that magic number for blog posts where people are starting to come and look at our website just to read the blog. So please house your blog directly on your website. And then when you get ready to share that information, it has a home and you're driving people back to your website, which is increasing your website traffic, which is exactly what you want. So like for us, um, I go live every Wednesday morning at 10 a.m. and I'm doing basics this month. Um, what time to post, when to post, where, how do you know which platform to be on? How do you know which day of the week? How do you know um, how many times to post on a specific platform? We're covering all that this month. But every time I go live, we convert that live content into a blog post. One of my team members goes behind me and they transcribe the whole thing and they create their five graphics to go with it and we break it down to easy to read chunks. We add all the meta tags and the links and now I've got some great written content that I didn't have to go sit down and write, which I do so much better when you could just let me talk than if I was just sitting in front of a computer thinking, okay, how do I want to say this? It just, it translates so well and it's a great way to use your content in more than one place. And then we take those blog images and we use them on Instagram and I'll go to Pinterest and I'll pin those images directly into my Pinterest account directly to my social U board. And we will also use them, of course, use the link on Facebook. It's just so many different ways to reuse that blog content. Um, something else that's cool is the thing called Lumen5. There's a free version. You um, upload your URL for your blog into Lumen5 and it creates a video from your blog posts. So cool. Um, now you can edit it if you want to and it pulls your own images or you can substitute or swap out images. Very neat little little trick. And it's a great way. Again, it's a different way to present the same content. You guys, I mean, how many times have you read staging tips? Well, how can you make them unique to you? Well, you're unique. So that makes your, your interpretation unique. So when you write your blog post and then you go back and you, um, you run it through Lumen 5 or you create your own images, it makes it unique to you. So Thank you guys. I'm so glad you enjoyed this. And I, I will, again, as soon as we're done, I will go into the Facebook page and add the link for the color match and the remove background program that's free so that you guys can see that. Um, are there any other questions for me? Is there anything else you guys want to know? I'm going back and reviewing so that I can see if I missed anything. Thank you, Jane, about the languages. I surely, of course, common sense, it would have to be available in more than English. But thank you so, so much for verifying that for me. I appreciate it. Um, I don't love <clears throat> PowerPoint <laughs> because it's not editable right away. Um, I am all about Prezi, P-R-E-Z-I. -E That's what I use for all of my presentations because they are, um, I can change it instantly. Um, I can literally be doing a presentation and have one of my team members change something or add something and it's right there. I love that. Um, and Prezi stores everything online. So if I lose my computer or if there's a house fire, God forbid, if there's any kind of emergency, I have Prezi's that go back five years, ooh, five years, and it's so cheap. It's like $40 for the entire year, and I can go in there and duplicate, and it makes your videos the coolest thing it does. If I embed a video directly into a Prezi, it will automatically play when I pull up that slide, and PowerPoint doesn't do that. So I like Prezi. Yes, this is being recorded to watch again. It's going to be um, stored inside this Facebook group under the video um, link. So you just click on video and it will be right there. And I will again, put all of these URLs for reference so that you can easily go in there. If you forget, Oh, you know, what's, what was that color matching website that she said? I'll, I'll make sure that it's listed in the comments so that you guys can see it. Um, and seriously, if you have any questions, I'm, I'm close by. You can always pop in on Facebook, 10 a.m. Wednesday mornings. I will answer whatever you want to know. And I love to hear from you guys. Ask me questions. Hit me up. What, what do you need? Just let me know. Um, and that's it. That's it for me. Let's see. Are there any, any other questions? I will hang out for a couple of minutes just in case some of you guys have something to say. And, um, and that's it for me. But yeah, my team uses Canva 
all the time, all the time. Anything else? I realize I threw a ton of information at you. So if you come back and you have questions later, um, just let me know. You can send me a direct message. You can pop into my page, whatever works. Thank you guys so much for, um, for <laughs> thank you, Deborah. She says, I'm going to, uh, I use StreamYard so you can display comments. Um, I need to hire you almost immediately. Thank you. We have a lot of real estate experience, as you can probably tell. We've been working with Jenny's team for a long time. So if you guys are interested in the Realtor Pack, uh, we love those because we make it to your brand. So if your colors are black and white or red, white, and blue, we would make your color pack in your brand with your logo and your information on it. You guys, thank you so much for joining me and you uh, just have a great day. Let me know if you have any questions. I'm going to go ahead and tap out and put those links up there for you. So thank you very much. I appreciate it.